Hello YouTube, Wycliffe Barrett here, X-Plain Dedicated. I've decided I'm going to do a short series of beginner guides for X-Plain 11 in the same way as I did for X-Plain 10. Of course, X-Plain 11 is the newest and the most advanced flight simulator in the world, as claimed by Laminar Research, and I've been using X-Plain for some time, so I thought that this might be quite useful. So first of all, we're going to start off just having a look at uh, a few simple things. Here we have the splash screen, and we're going to look at the user interface. As you can see, we've got some buttons down here on the left, resume flight, new flight, load, save flight, flight school and settings. I'm going to do settings separately, I think, but uh, obviously resumed last flight is the last flight that you did. Uh, it'll just reload that flight wherever you stopped kind of thing uh, or wherever you started. New flight, as it says create a new flight load a save flight means that you can save flights and load them up later and flight school is a number of flying lessons and in fact I'll be honest and say I've never looked at that so let's have a look at the aircraft user interface because this has caused some confusion for a lot of people especially when they see odd things like question marks and small icons uh, you can go through the user interface in a number of ways so you can look at types of aircraft yeah, uh, you can look at uh, the number of engines. So if you if you want to choose an aircraft that's got two engines, then you can click on that. Then you've got actual manufacturers of aircraft, which you see there, and there's a whole range of them. Then you've got development houses. So you've got Laminar Research, Flight Factor, Step to Sky, Flight Factor, Jar Design, Airfoil Labs, SSG, etc. Whatever you've got in. So those are the development houses. So you can search for aircraft in any of those fashions. Or you can just pull the scroll bar down and look at the visual representations of them. Now, as I said, you'll see some where there are question marks. And all that means is that those aircraft have not been uh, customized. You'll also see small icons, and that's a problem to do with uh, the developer. Uh, that will get ironed out as time goes along. So regarding the question marks, um, basically what that means is that the liveries have not been generated and you would do that in a particular fashion and what you need to do is start up that aircraft first of all and then go back to this panel and where it'll have a badge on it that'll say generate icons you've also got a favorite section here which we're looking at right now whereby you can place aircraft into your favorite section so you don't have to go hunting for them uh, i'm going to put uh, one in and base what you have to do is click on the little star in the top right hand of the icon so let's put the md80 in there click and you see that the md80 has gone up into the favorite section there and it'll also what happens here it always puts them in alphabetically so let's put the airfoil labs in click and there you see the airfoil labs cessna 172 up in my favorites section it's a very useful thing the favorites bar because it means you can get your aircraft in there quickly looking over onto the right here we've got all our airports i can't remember how many i think it's twenty six thousand, maybe even more than that um, in the um, location and you can ch you can look for airports in a number of different ways okay so you've got uh, id you can have uh, id iko IATA, FAA, uh, city or state. The state I found a bit hit and miss. It's okay if you're in the United States of America, but you know if you're in the UK, we don't have states. But if I type in Cardiff, it'll bring up everything relating to Cardiff. So there's uh, the heliport, the airport, and another airport called Cardiff Brothers, which is I think in Canada somewhere. I'm not quite sure. Um, so, you, as I say, you can call up airports by any of those uh, means. You can scroll through, you can go, I think you can even just put in like country code, so, uh, so EG, and it would bring up all the airports under EG uh, for the United Kingdom, which would be quite a lot. It's a very useful tool. Um, you, it's no different from anything else that we've seen. It just looks prettier, okay, if, if there is such a word. Um, so moving on from that then we have 
the a weather panel down the bottom uh, un underneath that and the weather panel does cause an awful lot of confusion for a lot of people so i will go through it in some detail um, for you um, first of all you need to know that um, you can change the weather just by using the slider so you can move it up and down overcast broken whatever you may have noticed then as i was clicking on different airports it was changing rather quickly and that's because as you click on an airport it chooses it picks the weather for that location oh i forgot to say before we move on to that there's this customized button which allows you to zoom into the airport and pick your stand which you couldn't do previously now it picks up the stands that are actually depicted in the airport that's in your scenery Cardiff Airport is the Cardiff Airport that I did and I actually put all the stands in the correct places so you've even got the maintenance bay um, by the side of the uh, BA maintenance hangar so all the stands are in the correct places and are correctly numbered some airports uh, you may only find one stand on an airport the same size uh, that's because it hasn't been done correctly moving to the weather then click on the weather button and then um, you'll notice that it's uh, a depiction of the sky or the atmosphere above you and it tells you everything about what's going on but you can have real-time weather you can manually configure it or you can pick up some history meta history i'm going to just manually configure this and mess around and play about and move things about see and and create different sizes of of weather uh, obviously there are certain uh, things that you cannot increase the size of such as the wind but you can put different levels of wind in uh, and you can move them around as well uh, over on the left hand side you'll see there are different types of layers here yeah so scattered broken uh, those those you can move about and change the size of with the two little buttons on it there yeah and uh, you can change the wind direction and the amount of speed of the wind, turbulence, frequency, uh, and so forth and so on. So that is really a, a lot more, um, what's the word, user-friendly than in X-Plane 10. But also, not only is it user-friendly, it allows you to actually uh, create far better weather for yourself as well. So a good advancement, but because I always fly online, I always have my weather on um, download real world weather. And then there are some presets. So, you know, you've got VFR, CAVOC, um, CAT1, CAT2 and CAT3 situations as well, which you can see there as I mess around with them. And you can alter those as well a little bit on, on the left hand side. The, the, I suppose the, the main thing is that uh, with this is just to mess around with it, you know, play with it, move the settings around to see what weather you can create for yourself. Um, be very careful with your visibility uh, because uh, if you bring the visibility down too low, then you will be flying in fog and you won't see very much at all. But uh, as I say, everything is is on this weather settings panel if you want to create your own weather as i say i always fly online so i just use real 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 weather uh, i have got a couple of add-ons that help my weather to to produce the weather that i want or how i want to see it and um, we'll talk about those uh, in another video i think um, this video is just very quickly showing you a part of the user interface the next video will go on to look at um, settings uh, I, th I felt that that needed a video in its own right i'm still playing around with the weather settings here so there you have it um, i think the user interface now is a lot easier also finally uh, you can set the date and time uh, there's a little checkbox in the bottom left hand side there that says uh, follow real time so at the moment this was on real time uh, but you can change it to whatever you want uh, and it, you know just by clicking the button and then you know coming out of there just in the time there or even on on the final screen down at the bottom just pull the slider over so uh hope you've enjoyed this short video um my computer is uh, run by Wired Fire uh, produces these kind of images or 
you know this kind of environment as you can see in X Plane 11. So as always, my name is Wycliffe Barrett. Hope you found it useful. We'll see you soon. Cheerio. Yeah.